welcome everyone to the July 2018 Statistically Speaking Stats Amore webinar. Uh, we're going to be talking today about logistic regression for count and proportion data. It sounds like a weird thing to be doing. Um, but there are certain situations, there are relationships between, say, logistic and Poisson distributions, and there are certain times when we have a count or a proportion, and really it's fundamentally a binomial process. So uh, here's an example, and I totally made up this data, but... Um, it's, it's a typical kind of data set I see. So here we have in our data set, we have 14 subjects and we have some predictor age. Okay, so some maybe a covariant. We have another predictor treatment group. And then our outcome variable might be say, you know, number of symptoms. Maybe we're giving them something like a depression questionnaire and it has 20 items and it says do you experience this symptom yes or no so out of these 20 questions uh, maybe this person has 20 yeses this person has 11 this person has nine but you could think of this in many different situations and we'll talk about different kinds of examples where these things occur they could be questions correct on a test you know things like that so what I have found is often people tend to think of either this number of symptoms as a count variable and try to apply a Poisson, or they say, wait a minute, this person skipped two questions, they didn't even answer them, and we have a little missing data here for whatever re reason, we couldn't record it. So this person only answered 17, so I'm going to change it to a proportion. And now that it's a proportion, it's continuous. So it looks like we should be able to treat it as if it were a continuous variable, run a regular linear regression or ANOVA, and we're, you know, it's, it's really simple, okay? Now, if we had this other variable here, this complication, this outcome variable, like did they have some sort of complication, again, yes or no, that's really clear to, to everyone um, that this should be a binary logistic regression. It looks like what a logistic regression should have. Uh, it's got ones and zeros as our outcome. But as it turns out, number of symptoms is also appropriate for a logistic regression. And we're going to really dig into all the details about why. So this is just... Um, Really the kind of thing I, uh, you see a lot um, in data sets, and I, I just want you to stop and think about, wait a minute, what kind of count variable is this, or what kind of proportion variable is this? Okay, so uh, we're going to really go through three sections here. The first one, just a really brief review of linear and binary logistic regression, and I'm talking brief, very brief. And then we're going to dig a little bit into some statistical theory that most of you probably haven't seen. I'm sure some of you have taken some theory classes in statistics, but probably most of you have not. So we are going to dig into the Bernoulli and the binomial distributions and how they're related and how they are really the basis of logistic regression and the two different types of logistic regression. The one we're mostly familiar with and the other one. And then we're going to literally talk about, okay, hopefully by then you understand why some of these examples fit a binomial distribution. And then we're going to dig into the application. So when can you really treat a count or a proportion variable as a logistic regression? When can't you? When is a Poisson better? When is a normal better? Things like that. So we'll, we'll dig into some of the real details of actually putting it into a regression model. Okay. I assume this is familiar to everyone. Um, you're all 
familiar with linear regression, but just very briefly, we have an outcome variable y here, and it has an i subscript. i means the outcome or response value for the ith person in our data set. We, of course, have beta naught our intercept. Beta 1 is the regression coefficient for x1, our first predictor, which itself has an i because each x variable also has a value per person. And all of these look the same until we get to our residual. Residual, of course, is the vertical distance between each actual data point and the predictive value of that data point on the regression line. I'm reviewing this because some of these details will become important. Um, so again, each individual has a value for that error term, their residual. Okay. Now, there are other assumptions to linear regression, but I want to focus on the distributional assumption. Looking for practical, relevant answers to all of your statistical questions? Join our Statistically Speaking membership program for monthly presentations like this one, as well as weekly Q&A sessions with our statistical support team. Visit theanalysisfactor.com for details. Happy analyzing!